How's everybody doing? Thanks for joining this week on another great ice fishing episode of Sportsman Journal. As you can see, we're <laughs> bundled up like Ralphie from Christmas Story. It, it is, is super cold. It is cold. It's actually the real first real cold snap of the season, which usually comes earlier, but uh, almost mid-January, and it is nice and balmy out here, as you can tell how we're dressed. And today, on top of how cold it is, we're going to be doing night fishing. So it's going to make it even chillier out here. That's right. We're going to target big <laughs> slab crappies on a really, really, really clear, I'm talking 20, 30 foot visibility lake in central Minnesota. And the cool thing about this is a lot of pressure during the day, but a lot of people kind of skedaddle out of here. And that's when these fish really become active at nighttime because of the pressure, because of the cold. We're going to be downsizing really small stuff. Very small. Very small micro, almost micro. I'm going to have a hard time with that. I like spoons for crappies. I know. So, so it's a little something different, yep. but we're going to hopefully catch some big slab crappies. That's the plan. And yeah. uh, we're going to be spending most of our time back here in the otter where it's nice and warm, but we are going to have set up some coolers. So hopefully we'll get some flags so we might be outside a little That's bit. Right. I'm excited. But Anytime <laughs> we get to fish for big crappies, I'm stoked. Everybody, thanks for watching. We'll be right back after word from our sponsors. This segment of Sportsman's Journal is brought to you by Baitmate Fish Attractant. All right, Sarah is finishing setting up the tent real quick, doing a couple odds and ends, bringing the old snack bag inside. I am going to get the finicky coolers hooked up. And you guys see us use this almost every ice fishing episode. We got coolers set out because they're a great tool for covering water. And especially fishing a basin for crappies like we are today, you're going to want to cover some water, get some of these big slabs on the ice. But one cool thing that we're doing is Tom made these flags so you can add a light to them. You can add a little bell. You can hook up little uh, noise indicators on them. So you can do a lot of stuff with them. They're just not for daytime. And that's gonna be really cool. Hopefully we'll get to see some lights popping tonight. Just a simple rubber, rubber band wrapping it five or six times around there and it holds it nice. So even when it pops, it stays up there really nice, just like that. And that's gonna be huge for us tonight. And what we're gonna be using on there today, since it's really gonna be a finesse bite, but I wanna go kind of as simple as we can get. And I have a number, this is a number six, just a live bait hook, blood red and a number three split shot. So really, really small stuff for the crappies because it's gonna be a real light bite. And one reason why I do not wanna go with a treble hook on this is because it's gonna take us a little bit to get to the finicky foolers. I do not want those crappies to swallow it and, and die from it. So I got a single hook to fish survival rates a lot better. And especially if we're catching big fish, I don't wanna keep them obviously. So it's just a number six hook and a number three split shot. While Tyler is busy setting up the foolers outside, I volunteered to do the tackle talk because it means I can sit inside the nice warm hub. And what we are gonna be rigging up one of our rods with is the Northland Tackle Gill Getter. So I'm gonna grab one here. Uh, it actually comes in three different sizes. So uh, 132nd, 164th, and 172nd. This is uh, right in the middle. And the reason that I'm gonna choose this one is because with cold fronts and high pressure, we know that they want small stuff. We're gonna tip this with either a spike or a maggot or a wax worm. Um, we'll probably be switching it up. We're gonna let the fish dictate to us basically what we want. But uh, these little guys are gonna be on our jigging rods. And hopefully we're gonna get after those slabs. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Come on, he's there all over that thing. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. It feels good. First crappie of the night. I know, I'm excited. He is, oh, oh he might be in my transducer. Oh, Can you get him? Can you get him? Oh, oh my him. gosh. Yes. That is a nice first fish. Wow. And look at that tiny little gill getter we're using from Northland. Just a tiny little jig. I mean, this is a finesse, about as finesse as you can get bite for crappies. That is a big slab, and that is a heck of a first fish to start out things. Love it. Big fish, just using a wax worm on that one. I'm telling you what, if it stays like this and we're using these tiny little baits, this is gonna be fun. I'm using one of Kramer Custom Rod's six shooter, which is about as small as he makes for ice fishing sticks. Really finesse rod, awesome first fish. Let's get him back in there. You got a, you got a high mark. There's, I know, I'm trying to get up to him. Oh, wait, I got one, I got one, I got one. Come on, come on. He's dropping on the line. Ooh. There you go. 
It feels a little bit better, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, do I need to get out of the way? I don't know yet. Uh oh. It uh oh. What did I do? Oh, I caught my hole. I think we're okay. No, no. Do I have yes, you? Yes, you have me. Shoot. You, have me. you know what? Just my bail's open. Is he big? He feels better. All right, go ahead. I don't know. Now that I was pulling against you, I don't know. Maybe he's not. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. What's oh, nice? Oh, nice. Nice. oh my gosh. Come on, Trampy. Look what he's got. <laughs> he's got your jig. <laughs> he's got my jig. I came up to get the high one that we both saw. And I was not. Wow, looking. Sarah. That's yeah, a dandy. You got him? No. Okay. I don't know All why right. I had to stand up, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a dandy. That's a nice one. Oh my goodness. I was watching Tyler's screen. That's awesome. Oh. Watching what Tyler was doing. I might need the pliers for him. All right. It's so weird. I have two jigs. I got to pop my jig out there. Look at this tiny stuff we're using. I mean, just little big crappies. Look at that. That is a dandy hunt. <laughs> He's giving your crappie a run for the money. Yeah, he is. Look at that. That's nice. Oh, wow. All right. I'm going to send him back down. And, oh, oh, there we go. There right there. The there we go. There we go. Flag. Sarah just threw back. Just literally dumped. She was, I don't even think she had it down the hole yet. And we heard the flag go off. But what's cool about having the finicky foolers, you can do a lot of stuff with them. And here we are again, we're fishing for big crappies, but there's fish here. I got a nice one right here. Yeah. This is a good fish. That's a good fish right here. Come on, buddy. This is a real good fish. He's right on the side of the hole. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he feels good. I can see him. He's stuck sideways a little bit. He got, he got flipped around. Oh, come here, pal. Oh, there we go. Nice. That's what we're going after right there. Another 12 inch. almost looks like the one Sarah just threw back. The big ones are coming in, coming in packs. And there we go, just a little tiny little number six live bait hook. And a fat head hook behind the door, so got him. That's so much fun. That is a beautiful fish right there. Whoa, he's ready to go back. See you, bud. All right. There are just fish everywhere. They're coming up high. Oh, I got one coming. I know, I got, I've had one scoping me out for a while. I think I just missed him. Oh, my goodness. They're like just barely touching it. Yeah. You know what I need? This. Yes. I suppose I should probably reel in because of what happened last time. Yeah. This one's a little bit better. But I, I don't want to. They all feel good. Really in under protest. No. Okay, I'm out. But I still have a huge mark yeah, on my do. screen. Yeah, you do. That mark is that ridiculous. Mark is this fish is not a bad fish. I gotta be careful. We're using oh, some. Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Can you get him? Yeah. Get him. Nice. Oh my goodness. That's not too shabby. Got some shoulders on her. Got some shoulders on him. Look at right in the corner tip of the mouth. They're barely you got taking her? that little tiny thing. What are those one? 64,000 gill getters. Yeah. Thank you. Good hand off. All right. Popped it right off here. Waxy, which is nice. We got waxies. We got spikes. I'm doing decent on wax worms. I think Sarah, what are you using, Sarah? I got spikes. You got spikes too. That's another, what, probably 12 inch crappie. Yeah. Beautiful fish. That's fun. It's a nice one. I know. I just cannot believe how light this bite is. I mean, this is high pressured fish, gin clear water, like we talked about at the beginning of the show. So these fish pretty much predominantly during the winter time when they're lethargic feed at night. So it's a really tough bite, especially when there's all these people on, on this particular spot, you gotta come out here. There's nobody else out here fishing right now. And we're getting a big reward here by being out. This segment of Sportsman's Journal is brought to you by Northland Fishing Tackle. They've been coming up real slow off the bottom. Feels like, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, you do. 
Wow, that guy didn't mess around. <laughs> no, he did not. He was high. I was just yeah. dead sticking down there, hanging out. Here he comes. Now feel the a little question better. is, he doesn't feel huge, but oh, oh no, he's fighting. There we go. Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. That's not bad. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Look at that. Not a huge wall mounter, but a nice crappie nonetheless. And he came up and he did exactly what we wanted. I was dead sticking. We talked about very, very small. I was dead sticking at about four feet off the bottom. He came in about two feet off the bottom. I noticed him. Whammo, you got him. I swear. And he was hungry. Yeah. So we have talked a lot about how small of a bait we're using tonight. And a lot of these fish we're catching, if you have too stiff of a rod, or not sensitive enough of a rod, you're gonna, you're not gonna see your rod tip. You're not gonna feel any of these fish. Right. You have to have that perfect combination exactly. because if you, if your line is too heavy, if your bait is too heavy, right. if your rod is too stiff, you're not gonna feel those right. fish. And both of us have two pound test mono on, and we're using Kramer Custom Rods 30 inch six shooter series, made for panfish. Perfect. Really great bluegill rod because they're so such a nice little soft tip for light stuff, real small stuff, but you have to use it for these crappies and it's getting the job done. It is. It's got a nice little thicker butt in the back end here for getting better hook sets, but he can make any size. A lot of guys are using like 28 inch, 26 inch stuff for bluegills. So these are 30 inch or so a little bit longer. You get a little more backbone down here in the in the butt of the rod. For those 14 inch For those crappies. 14 inch crappies, yeah. But you gotta have a good sensitive rod so you can, you're almost, you're visually, we're visually catching these fish. We're not feeling anything. No, you, you're it is, not feeling anything. It is, you gotta watch that rod tip for the slightest change. You're watching your electronics. Yep. And you're watching your rod Yeah, tip. you're watching your bird for the fish to show up. Once he's on it, electronics go right to your rod tip and watch that thing. Yeah, I, I'm certain that I've lost a few fish because I look back at my electronics. You go back and forth, right? Well, you and, get excited. Yeah, well, yeah. And uh, I haven't missed any tonight. Flag. Yeah. You want me to get it? All right. The old flash of the light. Let's see what we got going here. Uh, when it's negative eight degrees, you need the hole covers. He's there. Yes. And it's good weight. Look at that ice build up on there already. It is cold, but the fish want to eat. That's good. How big are you? Are you a big dog? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I got that single hook in there. There he is, there he is, there he is. Hold on, buddy. I really don't, you know what? We're just gonna grab him because I want him so bad. Look at that, yes. Nice. I got my split shotgun hung up on the ice there. Dandy crappie right there. Love it. That's a beautiful fish. That is so much fun. And we talked about at the beginning, a little hook so that we don't have to hurt him too bad. It's right on the top of his mouth in there. And I should be able to put my finger down there and pop him right off. The hook just came out right there. Perfect. Not a bad one, huh? On the fooler, I love it. Tiny little hooks came right out of there so we don't hurt him. I'm gonna put him back. And you can see how cold it is. His fins are freezing up super fast. And we don't wanna keep any of these big ones like this. There he goes. All right, I love it. The fooler. Nighttime bite. May I tell you, these things, you catch so many more fish having them, especially, I mean, you can really do some damage and if you get on some huge, big, big schools, you can catch a lot of fish with them. But when we're waiting for the pods to come through, like, like Sarah and I are doing tonight, I mean, it's not nonstop action. We're kind of waiting two or three show up. So having the extra line out, especially away from the shanty, fish different water, cover different water, these things work perfect. I gotta get a new minnow, get back down there. That's a really nice mark. There he is. Got him. Now I loosened my drag before. <laughs> I feel like I might have loosened it a little too much. Oh man. Let's see what we got here. 
feels better. It feels like a better fish. Oh yeah, it's a good one. It's a good crappie. It's a good crappie. I missed this fish twice. He came up and hit and it was the softest hit. And I missed him twice and he came back again and he gave it a little bit better pull and I was able to set the hook finally. And then I had my drag too loose. Oh, could have been a debacle, but able to get him up through the hole. Look at that. Nice crappie. Oh, fun stuff. Tyler's got two fish all over his bait. Oh, one just dropped off. I got one under mine now. There. That's a better fish that right there. Better and fish. you see, I didn't even know he hit. No, I know. Because he just... You have to, like, just, move your own rod tip. Yeah, this is a nice crappie. Okay, I'm ready. It's better. Please let me get him up. You know how much oh, I love oh big slabs. Gosh, grab oh him, grab him, grab him, grab him. Just get him up. Yes. Oh my gosh. That is what we're talking about right there, everybody. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mr. 1-4. I cannot believe how these big fish are hitting this. I mean, if you were to tell me that was a crappie bite, I would say, no, that's a four inch perch. That is so subtle. You have to go small. You have to go small. You got to go slow. You gotta go subtle. Three S's, that's what we should be talking about tonight. I mean, are you kidding me? That is a quarter of an inch bait. 14 inch slab crappie. Oh my goodness, look at that fish. I love it. I love these things so much. What a fish. Unbelievable, that's what it's all about right there. Man. And I'm, we're doing it with Kramer Custom Rods, 30 inch six shooter. Perfect for panfish, made for bluegills mostly, but this bite is so subtle and our baits are so small. You don't want to use something too small you can't feel and you don't want to or excuse me you don't want to use a rod that's too heavy where you can't feel what you're using and the other thing is you want a little bit of backbone in it and that's what the six shooter has for getting good hook sets because when you're i mean this is a pound and a half two pound crappie and you want to get some <laughs> some good hook sets in that thing Beautiful fish. wow unbelievable what do you think sarah good fish <laughs> yeah that is a awesome one let's take a look here we've been talking sarah and i've been talking about the gill getter all night and I got, for that one, I was using maggots. Sarah's been using a wax worm. Yeah, a little bit bigger boat. Yeah, maggots or spikes, whatever you want to call them, but I gotta, I gotta reload on the, on some new meat on there, but look how tiny those things are. These are one 64th ounce that we're using, but what's really nice about these is that they're horizontal presentation. We talk about that quite a bit, horizontal, vertical, when we're ice fishing. We like the horizontal, especially if it is a light, light bite. The fish can't feel that when they suck that in. They take it in, it comes straight in their mouth. If it's vertical and they suck it in, it kind of makes that J shape and they can kind of feel that weight. So especially when you're doing finicky, finicky, finicky bite like that, you want to use something that's kind of horizontal in our experience, which seems to be the best. But that little tiny jig right there is what we're using. And that's the Northland Gill Getter with that slab cut underneath like that. And it, as you're jigging it, it kind of goes back and forth, a little erratic motion. And then you just kind of sit it there and we're just jiggling it real slow. And that's catching the fish, I love it. But just tiny little offering, high pressured water, like we said, stuff you don't want a big, huge spoon down there, you're just not hitting that. It's too much, you want really slow, small, and subtle, and you're gonna catch the big slab crappies. I got one high. I got one on me too. Did he crush it? He actually hit it pretty hard. Really? Oh. That's kind of been the Opposite. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, nice, yeah. nice, nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. nice, nice. Oh my gosh, he did engulf yeah. it finally. Oh, I don't have a good grip on him, but. Nice. Oh my gosh, that makes me want to cry. I finally call on. I know, they take a lot of work, don't they? It's been a little bit of a doldrum for you. Yeah. That's I've a... watched Tyler catch him, I've watched him on my screen, I've missed fish. He's not a wall hanger, but boy, is he a trophy in my mind. Because he saved me I know, from we've caught a lot fishing. of fishing. We've, we've seen a lot of fish and we caught, oh, man. We caught some nice ones there. Though. Yeah, yes, we got some beautiful crappies, and, uh, but they are just lethargic as all get out. And it can be as frustrating as can be, especially if you're a new angler or even someone who fishes a lot. When they act like that, it can be very, very frustrating. But that's why it's so rewarding when, when they finally hit. Nice one. Thank you. <laughs> you worked for that one. Yes, I did. I put in a lot of time for that fish. You did. <laughs> it is 11 o'clock, hon. It's getting late. Yeah. I am definitely hungry. Hungry. I am ready for dinner instead of just snacks. And we almost melted down to the 
It is so lake. cold outside <laughs> that we have I a keep small lake turning the heater on from high to medium to medium to high. And so it's melted, obviously, yeah. right in front of the heater. <laughs> and uh, it's becoming a little precarious when you stand up. Yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, I had a really fun time. And you know what? I tried and tried my best not to complain about how tough the bite was. <laughs> and we caught the bite was tough, really nice fish. But we did catch nice fish, and that makes it... It makes it okay to be out here. It makes it worth it. But that's, I mean, that's ice fishing. You're not going to catch fish every day. And when the fishing's tough, pressure-wise, cold front. Not quality fish, yeah. Uh, super clear water, small as the ticket. Yeah. But and we yeah. caught some dainty crappies. We did. We, we caught very, very nice fish. It was just, there were definitely some slow periods and where the fish would come up and look and right. you would do everything that you possibly could think of and they would just swim away. Just swim away. That's, just... that's, that's, that's hard and, and a little disheartening, but when they hit, you gotta make Get your, you back in yeah, game. Yeah, you gotta make sure you don't miss your opportunities yeah, either. Yeah, absolutely. We had a really great time. Thank you for joining us this week. We will see you next week on Sportsman's Journal. If you're looking for a new stick to put more fish on the ice this season, visit KramerCustomRods.com. Northland is proud to introduce a radical new design in ice fishing spoons that's anything but dead in the water. Welcome to Buckshot Coffin Spoon. The special angled flat sides not only generate its unique action, but also dazzlingly reflect light. Besides its action and flash, a brass rattle and kicker tail fin yield super loud fish attracting cues. Available in four sizes and 12 fish catching colors, there's no better choice. The Buckshot Coffin Spoon just gets the job done.